Am I the a-hole for not allowing my daughter to spend Christmas with me and my new family? I'm 46 female, I'm the mother of a 24-year-old woman from my first marriage, and 12 and 10-year-old boys from my second marriage. When I was married to my first husband, he was unemployed almost all our marriage. We lived in a house his father owned, his father paid our bills, he bought us the car we drove, he sent my husband money to take care of our family, etc. I was young, stupid, and in love. That is my only excuse for living like that. But when my daughter turned five, I started pushing my husband to work as I myself got a job. He didn't want to. Things escalated and ended up in us getting divorced. He got full custody while I got visitations every other Saturday after his dad hired a good lawyer, which I couldn't do. I also had to pay child support. I used to work a full-time and two part-time jobs to afford my one-bedroom apartment as well as the child support payments. A year after our divorce, my ex married a new woman. There was a lot of child alienation from them, and sadly, I couldn't afford to take them to court again. By the time my daughter turned 14, she was calling me by my name and calling her stepmom, Mom. I tried my best to hold on to my kid. I went to all the events I could go to. I planned fun days with the limited funds I had. Even when I couldn't afford to turn on the heat, I still made her sure to get her a Christmas gift. Sadly, by the time she turned 16, she no longer wanted to have anything to do with me. I took them to court, but they did nothing. At the last time I saw her, she said some very awful things to me. I was defeated, but I decided that I no longer had a daughter since that is literally what she wanted. I moved away, met a good man, married him and had two wonderful kids. Last year, my daughter reached out, saying she was sorry and that she wanted to reconnect. I was hesitant and resentful, but I still talk with her once a week. Suddenly, she asked if she could spend Christmas with us. She wanted to get to know her brothers. I told her that we were not in a stage where I could allow that. It got heated, but I told her that I could not trust her with my kids and that I was still not 100% sure that I wanted our relationship to become more. She says that I am an a-hole, that I am punishing her for things she had no control over that I know that what she told me and how she reacted to me was a direct result of her father's manipulation. Am I the a-hole? Edit. Since someone brought it to my attention, my kids are adopted, and she is my only biological child. I am just used to saying that I had kids. They are technically my late sister-in-law's children, but I raised them these last seven years. Now for the top comments. You're the a-hole. I was young, stupid, and in love. That is my only excuse for living like that. Your daughter was also young and surrounded by manipulative people who turned her against you. You were able to snap out of it and work hard to make a life for yourself. Your daughter, who hurt your feelings when she was literally a child, seems to have snapped out of it as well. But you offer her no grace. Can someone give this an award? OP, it might not come across as this is written, but I send you all my empathy. This surely mustn't be an easy situation for you. But with that said, I also feel for your daughter. Did you ask her how she came to realize her stepmom was not it? What made her realize she had been manipulated and emotionally mistreated? If she is okay? If these past years had been rough? OP, it's okay that you are scared to be vulnerable to someone who broke your heart. And it's fine if you don't want her on the 25th, sleeping at your home, meeting new hubby just yet. But I feel like she's trying to mend fences. That she realizes how she was manipulated, etc. But you were closing the door on her face. Saying no to coming to your home is fine, but perhaps you could have offered a compromise? A day out just the two of you? Dinner? Milkshake? Shopping? I don't know, but something. No, it doesn't deserve one. It deserves to be downvoted. OP, after hearing her daughter tell her that she wanted nothing further to do with her, hearing her daughter replace her with her stepmom, OP is understandably reluctant to rush back into things. In case you haven't noticed, Christmas is three days away. Are you guys really, really calling Opie the a-hole because she doesn't want to suddenly put reconciliation on a fast track? Also, notice how the daughter reacts when she's told no? She requested that she be allowed to spend Christmas with them, admit her half-brothers. Her mother, whom she disowned, cruelly insulted and spitefully replaced with a stepmom, is taking things slowly and refusing to rush into things. Any request that comes with penalties for a refusal isn't a request. It's a demand. The only a-hole in this story is the daughter. She cannot accept no for an answer, and she blames others for actions. 
Even if she was manipulated by her father, she's 24 and old enough to understand that her actions have consequences and how hurtful her actions were. A mature person would understand that people need to heal in their own time. Opie had respected her daughter's wishes and resigned herself to the fact that she has no daughter. She might be 24, but she still acts like a child. Opie is allowed to reconcile in her own timeline. And given how her daughter reacts when her demands are met with refusal, I don't think Opie should ever reconcile. Her daughter still has a ton of growing up to do. Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my cousin that his girlfriend's needs aren't as important as my daughter's? My daughter is autistic and has a support dog. He's an Anatolian shepherd, so a big scary dog. He was initially supposed to be a livestock guardian for my dad, but when I took my daughter to meet him, they kind of bonded. We ended up with him a few weeks later due to him being generally bad at his job, and now he works to support my daughter, and she absolutely loves him. This is all to say, we have a very big dog who looks very mean sometimes. He's sweet as anything, though. My cousin's girlfriend is terrified of dogs. The first time she saw him, she refused to come in the house. We have a pretty big house, so family meals are usually held at mine. This is obviously posing an issue as his girlfriend won't come into my house because of the dog. We have created him for a very short period so she could come in, but she is clearly very uncomfortable. And my daughter gets very nervous around new people without him present. I've explained that there isn't any compromise to make, and my cousin is quite annoyed, asking why we couldn't just leave the dog home and eat elsewhere. Honestly, I wouldn't mind if I could just leave my daughter with her mom, but no one else wants to cook, lol. In my opinion, if he wants to reinforce family bonding so much, he should offer to cook. Anyway, it's a serious issue right now and causing arguments within family. It all came to a head last night when they dropped off my dad. He's staying for Christmas. My cousin started yelling, asked me why I hated his girlfriend so much and couldn't accommodate her. I told him his girlfriend's fears weren't as important to me as my daughter's comfort. My dad ended up cooling it down and essentially called me an a-hole as she can't control her fears at all that. So, am I the a-hole? I feel a little bad, but my daughter feeling comfort is more important to me. Not the a-hole. Imagine coming into your home, eating your food and expecting you to get rid of the dog that calms your daughter. Funny how they can all complain, but none offer to open their home and bank account to change the house. Ask him and your dad why they both hate your daughter since they both like to open their entitled mouth to spew ridiculousness. The sheer audacity. Funny enough, I was like, who gave you the right? The first time. You're prioritizing your child's needs and hosting everyone. Your cousin's girlfriend doesn't have to go. A nine-year-old's extreme anxiety should be taken into account more than an adult's. Your cousin can host one year and cook, lol. Or maybe the girlfriend can cook? Not day whole. Your cousin's girlfriend can't control her fears? That's nice. Your autistic daughter can't control her fears either, and it's her freaking house. Your cousin and dad both need to get over themselves before they stop getting invited for Christmas. Best post. So they don't expect a fully grown adult to control their fears? Fair. But they expect an autistic kid to control their fear for some reason. I love how most adults got biased thinking like that, not gonna lie. OP, you're absolutely not the a-hole. While it's obviously not cousin's girlfriend's fault, it's not your daughter's fault either. And she shouldn't fear anything in her own home, which is her safe space. Not day hole. Your cousin sounds like a jerk who can't explain to his girlfriend why the dog is necessary. Don't exclude your daughter from family events, especially for the sake of someone who isn't in your family. She probably wouldn't care either way. She might or might not. But it's still your house, and you might care about people expecting your daughter to be excluded or anxious without her dog over the comfort of other people. Anxiety isn't a comfortable feeling. My oldest is on the spectrum and we've talked about what her anxiety feels like. It often includes a panicky feeling, stomach pain, a stress headache, and a racing heart rate, sometimes even chest pain. If this dog takes all of that away so that she can be a part of family events, I'd suggest getting the dog trained and making it official. Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my mom her husband can walk their children down the aisle, but he was never my parent so is not walking me? My mom met her husband when I was 17 and she married him after 5 months of knowing him. I was already living with my grandparents so I could attend college when he moved in with her. So, we never lived together. 
He never parented me or put a roof over my head or any of the stuff that some might say makes him worthy of playing father of the bride. He's an okay guy, but I don't love him or feel particularly close to him. He's just my mom's husband and the father to my half-siblings she had with him once I was already moved out. My mom has apparently decided though that he has done so much for me that I should be making him father of the bride at my wedding and have him walk me down the aisle. My dad died when I was still a baby, so mom doesn't count him, even though they were married and everything. Though they were both very young, so maybe she didn't care about him and only married him because she got pregnant. I don't know, but she was talking about her husband. He was acting like he expected it to and was talking about how it need to be introduced to some of his friends and co-workers. So when I invite them, they identify me as his daughter. I thought it was crazy. The man is not my parent. It is only family on a technicality, but we are not close. We hardly see each other ever. I told my mom it wasn't going to happen. She went crazy and accused me of being ungrateful and told me I was being disrespectful. And how could he not walk his kid down the aisle? I told him he could walk their children down the aisle someday, but he was never my parent and I was never his kid, so he was not walking me. He was offended as heck and told me he'd never do anything for me again. I asked him what he had done, and he said he took care of my mom and gave me siblings and he put me through college, which he didn't. He said if those things aren't appreciated, then why did he even bother her? Mom then told me I should be worshipping the ground he walks on because he's been such a good dad. She called me selfish some more, and then I just walked out and blocked her. But she told my grandparents, her parents, and they asked could I do it to show I appreciate him for being there for mom and for being kind to me. I told him he wasn't very kind to me there, and I pointed out that my uncle, dad's brother, was already doing it. They told me it would be kind to let him. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. It's amazing how this act of entitlement probably has just destroyed any good feelings Opie had about her mom's husband. It seems like he just went from a good guy glad is there for mom to delusional pushy a-hole who thinks he's owed special status because he exists. But while we're on the subject, Opie, I really think I should be the one to walk you down the aisle. Sure, we've never met, but I did something nice for someone once. I figured you owe me. Sure, sure, we'll make that happen. I'm sure you smiled at me on the street one day or something. It actually would be pretty funny to have a complete stranger walk you down the aisle instead of mom's husband. Like if said stranger had bought you lunch the day before, they'd have done more for you than stepdad did, and therefore they are more entitled to the role. Not the a-hole. Your mom and her husband sound like incredibly toxic people. My guess is that they have been telling everyone what a great stepfather he has been to you. And this is going to burst the little fantasy they have been telling all their friends to make him look good. The worst part is, he was fine before this. I was never a kid in his home or in his care to look after slash race. So it's not like he owed me anything. But after all this BS, he has made himself seem like such a controlling prick. And he wants to invite his friends and co-workers to your wedding? Yep, that blew my mind. Last story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to house my autistic brother after my parents pass away and telling my parents that they've ruined my brother's life? My brother Carl, 31 male, has a moderate form of autism. It's similar to Asperger's, but not quite the same. Carl has always been capable of learning and correcting any negative behaviors, like knocking before you enter the bathroom, asking before taking something that belongs to someone else. You wouldn't like someone making comments about your weight, so don't do it to others. Me and our sister Sarah, 36 female, would try to teach these skills to Carl. Carl clearly demonstrated that he was capable of learning, but my parents would undo any progress we made by claiming Carl was autistic and therefore incapable of learning or changing. So trying to teach him at all was cruel. My parents have never brought Carl to any kind of behavior or social therapy. They've held onto the excuse of he's autistic and can't change slash learn for Carl's entire life. Carl still lives with my parents who are now in their 60s and they're exhausted. My parents previously pressured Sarah to be Carl's caretaker after they passed away slash were unable to care for him. But since Sarah now has children of her own, they've started pressuring me instead. They claim to be feeling sick and ask if I could pick up groceries and bring them in the house for them. When I got there, my parents clearly weren't sick and said they wanted to talk to me. They tried convincing me to house Carl after they passed away slash were unable to take care of him. 
They said that all I had to do was let Carl live in my house and keep an eye on him, and that they would set aside money to pay for a personal chef slash maid to handle Carl's needs. I told my parents no, that I am not housing Carl, and that there was nothing they can say or do to change my mind. My parents started to lecture me, saying I was being so cruel to Carl because he's autistic, and my refusal to look after him will ruin his life. I told my parents that they are the ones who have ruined Carl's life. They saw Carl was capable of leading a normal life, but they coddled him instead. They actively stopped him from learning skills and how to survive on his own. So when they pass away and neither Sarah nor I will look after Carl, it will be their own fault. Now, several family members, mostly older ones who are too old to look after Carl themselves, are calling me an awful sibling. They accused me of being ableist for refusing to house my autistic brother and become his legal guardian after my parents die. Especially because my parents are desperate at offering to pay for a personal chef slash maid for Carl. I don't understand how I'm an ableist for refusing to be Carl's legal guardian. Because he isn't my responsibility. I know what I told my parents was disrespectful, but it was still true, and they need to hear it. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. He's not your child. If you and your sister want to do something, you might look into how group homes work without telling your parents. This doesn't obligate you to be guardians, but having info and resources is always good. Sadly, it sounds like your brother has missed out on a lot of early education, but that doesn't mean he would be ineligible. He may actually thrive in that type of environment, at least the good ones. Residents are treated respectfully like adults, they get to interact with peers, and there is access to life skills and activities. Look into this now, or even day programs. Transitioning him while your folks are still alive will be much easier than after they've passed. If your folks are exhausted, if they get your brother into something like this during the day, a few days a week will give them a break, and they end up seeing him become more confident and capable. Not the a-hole. From the mother of a 33-year-old son who has Asperger's syndrome, your parents have absolutely failed their son. Look, I understand. I wanted to protect my son too. I wanted to make sure I did everything I could for him until my older brother had a come-to-Jesus talk with me. It was not pretty. I did not realize the damage I was doing to my son, and it took my brother to set me straight. It was hard to hear, and it was definitely hard to see my son learning and not needing me as much as I thought he did. My advice is to have your parents hire someone who can teach him life lessons. So when your parents are no longer here, he has the ability to live on his own with someone checking in with him once or twice a week. Autism does not necessarily mean unable to function in society. They just need a little more help. 